get you some. Oh, yeah. Mate, it's lucky she can cook. Wow! G'day, lovelies. Welcome back. I hope you all had a lovely Easter. All right, tonight I'm going to do a couple of out-of-the-box scones. Because oh, I love out-of-the-box. So the first one up is potato scones. So what we need first is one cup of cold, plain mashed potato. So I've got three small spuds there. I'll probably only need two, but I'll use three anyway. So we just want to do what we'd normally do. Peel them, cut them, boil them up until they're soft, and drain them. Alrighty, once we've drained them out properly, salt and pepper. Alright, we want to mash it really well, just plain. Once we've mashed it, we want to measure out one cup and then chuck it in a bowl to go completely cold. Alrighty, our potato is now cold. Now we want to preheat our ovens at 200 degrees Celsius. We want to grab out a baking tray with baking paper. Into a large bowl, we want to put one and a half cups of self-raising flour. We want to put 30 grams of butter into a small saucepan. We need to get one cup of milk ready and half a cup of tasty cheese grated. And that's all we need for this. All right, next step is we want to melt the butter. While the butter's melting, I'm going to add the potato to the flour and I'm going to mix them through together. Okay, once we've chopped it, pushed it through enough, it'll look like this. Okay, once our butter has melted, we want to add our one cup of milk and our 30 grams of melted butter and we want to mix it all in together once we've done that we now want to add another half a cup of uh, self-raising flour and mix that through okay now once we've got it into a gooey lump we want to put some plain flour on the bench and dump our gooey pile on top so the best thing you can do with scones is to hardly touch them at all you don't want to need them the more you need them the harder they get alrighty once we've done that put some more flour over the top plain flour now you can put a fair bit on because we're not kneading it in we're just doing it to be able to get it to be workable So we just want to pick it up and just keep rolling it around in the flour basically. Okay, and once we've got it that we can actually work with it. Get it into a log. Put a bit of flour on the knife. And we want to divide it into eight. Yeah. Okay, once we've done that we get our first bit. We just want to roll gently because it's really soft, okay, because we haven't kneaded it. All right, once you've got it out into a decent, might need a bit more flour. All right, once you've got it out to a decent log, say two hands spread out length, you want to get it and you want to wrap it like a snail tail. Alright, push it in on the edge. Like that. And chuck them on our tray. Once we've done that, we've got our eight pearlers ready to go. So we want to put them on nice and close together, but not touching. Now we just need a little bit of milk, and we just want to put it all over them. You can either use a brush, or just rub it on. Once we've done that, we now want to get our half a cup of cheese and we want to put it over the top of all of them. Alright, now our oven is up to temperature. Bang them in there. 28 minutes later in my plain electric oven and mate, it smells awesome in here. Ooh, shut the front door. If you don't have a cooling rack, just throw them out onto the bench. So you know they're ready with that beautiful golden colour and you've got the hollow test. Flick them and they sound hollow. Oh, they're ready. Oh, gosh, mate. 
Oh, that smell. <laughs> well, there you have it, lovelies. An absolutely beautiful scone. They're heavy and filling. Awesome on their own, warm with butter. Awesome with stews, casseroles and soups. Great for lunch boxes. I personally love eating them cold. I don't even put butter on them. I just grab and go. I can't wait and tears give them a crack. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be back soon. Toodles.